There are a lot of questions and myths surrounding the most powerful meteorite impact in modern human history. In this clip, I'll explain everything about the Tunguska event. So stay tuned, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell. Welcome! You might not know this, but every year on June 30th, the so-called Asteroid Day is celebrated. It might not be as relevant as Christmas or Easter, but it's still a very important International Memorial Day, since it always takes place on June 30th, because that's when the so-called Tunguska event likely occurred. And that is one of the most blatant asteroid events in the history of mankind, and yet we know almost nothing about it. The entire eastern part of Russia is not really densely populated. In this Siberian wasteland, where a few indigenous peoples, such as the Evenks, live, but otherwise only reindeer graze and trees stand, a truly fascinating event occurred in 1908. An asteroid about 200 meters in diameter entered the Earth's atmosphere. Incidentally, that's when it's called a meteor. It must have exploded somewhere before it hit the ground. Hundreds of thousands of smaller meteors then struck the Earth's surface, devastating an area of 2,000 square kilometers and probably destroying and snapping over 60 million trees. So really an event of almost apocalyptic proportions. The only problem is firstly, in 1908 there obviously wasn't the kind of global media coverage we have today. So first of all, nobody really noticed it. And secondly, there are hardly any people living there except for a few events. Even today, it's still unclear whether there were any human casualties at all. Some sources say that three people died, but most sources actually say that only reindeer and trees were harmed and no humans. And that's just because almost nobody lives there. If this thing were over Tokyo, for example, if it had struck over Berlin, we would have had millions of deaths. With this level of devastation, the Tunguska event is the most devastating meteorite impact in modern human history. Sure, from a prehistoric perspective, there were definitely much worse events. Just think of the poor dinosaurs or something, many species of which went extinct, although not all of them. But in modern human history, that was the most intense meteorite impact there has ever been. And yet we know so little about it, especially since it is no longer possible to research it today because there is no crater. At least it is highly unlikely. How can it be that a meteor 200 meters in diameter leaves no crater behind when it hits the ground? This is probably because the Tunguska meteor had a very low density. In other words, it was a very porous rock that then flew apart in the atmosphere and broke up. That means that the thing did not arrive at the bottom in one piece. Then we would have a gigantic crater, like the Beringer Crater in Arizona, in the United States. States, for example. But since it already broke up in the atmosphere, only a lot of small projectiles hit the Earth and they weren't big enough to create a crater. Nevertheless, the energy from this impact, the atmospheric friction and everything else likely created a heat column. And that knocked over all the trees. Despite the low population, a few people definitely noticed that something happened and it wasn't just the reindeer. In a Siberian village several hundred kilometers away, the inhabitants saw a 20 kilometer high pillar of fire. They must also have thought that the world was ending, and the shockwave that was triggered by the Tunguska event traveled at the speed of sound over the Earth's surface and could be measured by seismographs in different countries. For example, after about four hours, the shockwave from Tunguska arrived in France, where it was then measured. So the geologists at the time were well aware that something was going on, and a Russian geologist named Kulig, who then also made an expedition there but just did not find a crater, for the reasons I have just described, even the German airship Graf Zeppelin flew over Siberia to find the crater, but there was no chance, because there is no crater. Then came the Second World War, and research into the event was no longer a high priority, logically, but now geologists are researching it again and are still wondering what actually happened there. The fact that there is no crater can be explained by the meteor exploding in the atmosphere. But why are there no pieces of the meteor? To this day, no one has found a stone in the entire area that undoubtedly comes from space. That's a bit strange because the stuff should actually be spread around. And that's why there are now a few other hypotheses. Some geologists claim, for example, there was a massive volcanic eruption or some kind of gas bubble beneath the Earth's surface that exploded. That could be, but that wouldn't explain the 20 km high fire fountain because you usually don't see such a massive fountain in these kinds of geological events. That's why most researchers still assume it was a meteor you sand. And some candidates for possible smaller craters have even been found because it's possible that the meteor broke apart and smaller pieces impacted. For example, the so-called Lake Checo in the area. That could be a small impact crater, but of course no one is really sure. And as always, when there's uncertainty about such events and no hypothesis can really be confirmed, some really wild hypotheses come up. 
And here we really find all sorts of things. Some people claim that we were dealing with a primordial black hole here, a very, very light black hole that raced through the Earth and perhaps led to an extreme earthquake in Tunguska. Others say it was aliens, of course. The aliens flew to Earth, knocked over 60 million trees, and then flew back home. There are really all sorts of theories. Consequently, there's also an episode of The X-Files that takes place in Tunguska, and the myth has also found its way into the world of computer games. In the game Borderlands 2, you can find a rocket launcher called Tunguska. So the Tunguska event has had a lasting influence on popular culture. Asteroid Day is celebrated, of course, not just for the fun of it on the day of the Tunguska event, but also to raise awareness that something like this can be incredibly dangerous, as it can pose a threat to millions of people. After all, the statistical probability that there will be another Tunguska event at some point in the future is immense. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if that happens over a million person city, then we really have a dramatic event. And that's why the asteroid is meant to highlight we should be much better prepared for such asteroid or meteorite impacts. Because back then, people weren't that advanced yet. Even if they had discovered the Tunguska asteroid beforehand, they wouldn't have had a chance to deflect it. You could have just watched and hoped it would hit in Siberia, which is exactly what happened. So, lucky in misfortune, except for the reindeer. And now in our time, we have an asteroid early warning system, which means we would most likely detect the thing. But the methods to deflect asteroids are still very, very rudimentary, even though there are some ideas and another asteroid could soon come really dangerously close to Earth. Or will it even hit the Earth? The asteroid Apophis has divided the scientific community. NASA is certain that we will not be hit, but perhaps they have forgotten a critical factor in their calculations. You can find out everything about this in the video in the top right hand corner. At the bottom right, you will also find another exciting topic related to space, space travel and science. Otherwise, I would say see you in the next video. Take care, folks.